This morning I want to start off with a story. As you can see, we're talking about faith being refined by fire. And I want to tell you about a woman who went to a silver refiner, a silversmith, to watch how that whole process took place. And as she walked in, the silversmith grabbed some silver and he put it right into the heart of the fire. And he explained to the woman that you have to take the silver and you have to put it into the hottest part of the fire. The reason for that is so that all the impurities of the silver can be burned out and they can be removed. That got her thinking about God and how God puts us in that kind of same fire, how hot that can be. And she thought of a scripture that it was in Malachi chapter 3. Starting in verse 1, it says, See, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the days of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. And so as she thinks about this passage, she looks at the silversmith and says, is it true that you have to sit here the entire time that silver is in the fire? And he gets a smile on his face and he says, not only do I have to sit here, I also have to keep my eyes on it the entire time. The reason I have to keep my eyes on it the entire time is if it goes just a second too far, all of it will be lost. So that get her, gets her thinking a little bit more and she says, well, how do you know when it's done? And like any good storyteller, we'll come back to that later on. <laughs> what we need to do first is we need to know what faith is. How is faith divined? Many of you may think of Hebrews chapter 11, starting in verse 1, that says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what is visible. So when we start looking at this passage and we look at the very first part of it, can you imagine if it started and it said, now faith is being sure. And it stopped right there. Because everything I've learned from a child tells me that is very difficult. Because faith is being sure of what we hope for. So you can see here that faith and hope are tied together. So where is our hope? because that is where our faith is. As it continues on, it says, and certain of what we do not see. That's another difficult concept, isn't it? As a time we're a child, we grow up and we get to touch, we get to smell, and to sometimes the detriment of our parents, I guess, we get to taste. There's many things you don't want to see a child putting in their mouth to taste it, but we get to taste, we get to hear, and that is what develops our understanding of the things around us, the things that are physical to us, the things that we can see. So how is it that we can be certain of what we do not see? That's a very difficult question to answer, isn't it? But as it continues on in the passage, we also need to understand, like, I, like it mentions in verse 3, by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what is visible. So everything around us as it was created by God, and we first start to understand that, is there because He created it. Not out of what we saw, out of what was not visible. So what is the purpose of refining anything by fire? 
as was in the first part of our story. You refine gold and silver and other metals to take all the impurities out of it. And so when we look at that and we think about the temperatures that have to be there in order to take all those impurities out. Gold is refined at a temperature of about 2000 degrees when done by fire. That is something I personally do not want to touch. <laughs> but think about the story again for just a minute. Who is sitting there the entire time it's being done? The one who's refining it. Not only is he sitting there feeling the heat of that because it's not like you can get away from 2000 degree heat, but he also cannot remove his eyes from it because at any given moment, if it's there too long, it'll all be lost. It's no different for us as we're being refined, as our faith is being refined by God. We have to go through these trials in order to remove the impurities from our life. So when we look at the first scripture we read earlier, we start to see this take place. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And so as we start to look through this scripture, we see that outwardly we're wasting away, yet inwardly being renewed day by day. Part of the process of going through this refining is to make our faith pure. In order to do that, we're going to go through trials. We're going to go through what we see as hardships. And it's difficult for us, right? It's difficult for us. But it's the way the impurities are removed from our faith. Because of the heat, because of those things that you go through, I think about the treatments that I just had to go through recently. And as I go and I have to sit and I have to wait to get these scans done, and they put this wonderful stuff in your body that comes out and it looks like it's uh, the stuff from Back to the Future and they crack this thing open and they say, okay, this is what you're going to get and you're going to sit here for about 45 minutes to an hour and wait for everything to take effect. As you sit in that room, you see these pictures on the wall that are beautiful scenes of the outdoors. Sometimes there's a creek with some flowers and it's a beautiful, serene feeling. And you think about all the things that God created and how beautiful it really is. And like we saw in Hebrews, it was made out of what was not visible. And so as you sit there and you relax, you try not to think about what you're going through. Very similar to a little child who has to go into the doctor to get a shot. There's not many of them that I know that would say, sign me up. I want to do that. But you try to take your mind off of it. You try not to think about what's, what's going to happen. So you try to focus on something else. You see, if we focus on what is seen, what does the Bible tell us? It's temporary. Everything there is temporary. But as you start to fix your eyes on all those beautiful things around us, you see the things that are not seen. And it's eternal. So when we start going through these trials, when we start going through the fire, where is our hope? Our hope is in the fact that we have eternal life because of the gift of his son. Amen. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the last scripture that we looked at in 1 Peter chapter 1. And I really appreciate the reading of that. 
And as we see early on, as was, was spoken to us, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into a living hope. There's that word again. Faith and hope are tied together. And where is our hope and why do we have that hope? As he continues on, he tells us, Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. That's where our hope is. Amen. We have been born into, we have that hope of a birth into an inheritance that can never go away. That is absolutely an amazing thing to think about, right? As he continues on and he says, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. So let's go back and think about that silversmith for just a second. Can you imagine to be able to sit in front of that fire like that, refining that silver or refining that gold and be shielded from that heat? We are shielded through God's power or by God's power. That's an amazing thing to think about. And you can see here in 1 Peter, he continues on, In this you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Why do we go through these things? We go through these things so that our faith can be proved genuine. This morning in class, we were talking about Abraham and the task and how he was tested with his one and only son to walk him up there and to sacrifice him. Not just go around the corner, but as it tells us in Genesis, on the third day they arrived and they could see it off in the distance. That's a long journey to think the entire time that you're going there to sacrifice your son. But what do we see in Abraham's faith? As he gets there, he tells the servants, wait here. We're going to go up and we're going to worship and then we'll be back. He knew God was there with him. He knew God was going to provide. And he was being tested. Because previously, he didn't have a perfectly clean track record, right? He made some mistakes in his life. When he was tested. We go through these things so that we can prove, be proved genuine. And as we continue on, we see these have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes, even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine. And so as we go through there and we remove the impurities in our life, we look at gold. The value of gold is absolutely amazing. People want gold because here on earth, it has so much value. But what is he telling us here? Your faith is worth more than that. That gold, it's going to disappear. It's going to perish. Just like the silversmith told that lady, if, if I take my eyes off that silver for just a moment and it's there too long, it's lost. And so as we look at that and we realize that our faith is worth more than gold, we see that it may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. At that point, when we can see that our faith is genuine, it is proven, and now it results in praise and glory and honor when Jesus is revealed. As he continues on, he says, though you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with the inexpressible and glorious joy. What is faith? Hebrews chapter 11 tells us that faith is believing in what we hope for and being certain of what we do not see. 
time and time again, we can see God work in our lives. We can see how he strengthens us, how he shields us, but he also puts us through these fires in our life. But he does that for the good of us so that our faith can be proven so that on the day, all the praise and the glory and the honor are to him. So when we go back to our story from earlier, as she's sitting there and she asks the silversmith, how is it that you know it's done? How is it you know it's complete? He gets an even bigger smile on his face and he looks at her and he says, because I can see my reflection in the silver. You see, God puts us through these things. He's putting us through the fire to remove the impurities so that he can see his reflection in our lives. That way we know our faith is genuine. We know our faith is proven. Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to go ahead and grab the penny that was handed out to you. And I want to tell you one more story about a couple who went to spend the weekend with the husband's boss. Seems like kind of an awkward situation, but the husband's boss, boss was a very wealthy man. And so the woman was very excited to get to see kind of an insight of what it was like to be wealthy, to live that lifestyle. And he spared no expense. He put, us, put them up in a, in a great location. He took them to the finest restaurants. And one night, as they were going to a very exclusive restaurant, they're walking down the street. And the man's boss is walking slightly ahead of him, and he's walking along, and he stops. And he looks down at the ground. Well, the woman's not real sure whether she should go ahead and pass him and head on into the restaurant. Not real sure what he's doing. Because as she looks at his feet, she really doesn't see anything except an old penny some old chewed up gum, some cigarette butts. What is it that could cause this man to stop? And he reaches down and he picks the penny up and he looks at it and he puts it in his pocket. Well, this is just driving the lady crazy. As they sit down for the meal, she just can't stand it anymore. And she starts in about how her daughter once had a coin collection. And she asks the man, if this was a rare coin that he found on the ground. Maybe it was a coin, maybe it was a penny of some kind of value. And he smiles and he reaches into his pocket and he pulls the penny out of his pocket and he lets her see it. And he asks her, what does the penny say? And of course she says, United States of America. <laughs> no, what else does the penny say? One cent. No, what else does it say? In God we trust. Every U.S. coin is minted with the words, in God we trust. But what does that have to do with an old dirty penny on the sidewalk? He said, every time I find a penny on the ground, I realize God is trying to get my attention. And so I stop for a moment and I pray and I try to figure out where my trust is at that very moment. Is my trust in God? And I realize that it is, I pick the penny up, I thank God for the reminder and I put it in my pocket. Well, that amazed the woman. This guy has all sorts of money. But that's the one thing that he could see on that penny every time. And he said, the good news is God's patience is everlasting and pennies are plentiful. So I gave you that penny today so that you can see and you can look back on that and realize that every time we walk along and we see a coin on the ground in front of us, we can realize that God is talking to us. God wants to know where is your hope? Where is your faith? Where is your trust? 
Because when we look at faith and trust and we realize the definitions, faith comes from something we can't see. Trust is something that we gain over time. It is what we believe in. It is what we know. It is what we understand. All of our trust can be in God. He's been there for us day in, day out, all along the way. God loves each and every one of us. That's why he tests our faith. That's why we go through the fires that we go through. It's to remove the impurities in our life so that his reflection can be seen in our lives each and every day. This morning, you have an opportunity, and we have an opportunity every day to examine ourselves. To see where our faith, where our hope, and where our trust truly is. You have an opportunity this morning to come forward. If you need prayers, we'll be happy to pray with you. If you need to take Christ on in your life through baptism, you have that opportunity as well. Realize that God is there with you each and every day, just like that silversmith. He has to sit there and he has to keep his eyes on you as you're going through it. Now is the opportunity. If you need anything, please come and as we stand and we sing.